you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's take a look at the BP Synth, a very cheap DIY monophonic synthesizer that you can build for around $20. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. For today's project, you'll need a Blackpill ST32F411 board, a UDA1334A DSC module, a 5 pin MIDI socket, 1 6 and 1 3 7 octocoupler, a 220 and 10k ohm resistor, a 1 and 4148 switching diode, jumper wires, and a breadboard. All the links are in this video's description. BP Synth was created by Blaine Perkins, who goes by the online name of SynthTech. On his YouTube channel, you can find a lot of videos on his projects and also the links to the BP Synth firmware. Download that file and unzip it. Inside the zip folder, you will find the Diffuse software. Install that so we can flash the firmware to the Blackpill board in the next step. On the Blackpill board, Hold down the boots button while connecting the USB-C cable that is connected to a computer as well. The black pill should now show up as working ST32 DFU device in your device manager. If it doesn't, you'll need to install drivers. Double click the device entry and search for the drivers which are located in the Diffuse software installation path. Just point your computer at that directory and let it scan its subdirectories and it will find the correct driver by itself. Next, launch the Diffuse software and in the upgrade or verify action field, click choose. Then find the DFU file located in the Blackpill firmware directory you unzipped previously. Click the Upgrade button, then Yes and wait for the firmware to be transferred. We can now continue assembling the hardware. Let's begin with soldering on the pins to the Blackpill board. The easiest way to do this without getting skewed pins is to push the pins into the breadboard first and then place the Blackpill board on them. Now solder all the pins one by one and you should get a nice and straight result. Don't forget to solder on the 4-pin header, which can be used to power up the black pill board. Next, let's repeat that process for the DAC board. Once again, push the pins into the breadboard and then solder them on one by one. Now push the DAC board into the breadboard on the far right side with a 3.5mm audio jack facing right. Push the black pill board into the breadboard with the USB-C connector facing right so there's enough space to plug a USB cable into it. Now connect the DAC board with some jumper cables. The connections are as follows. A4 on the black pill to WSEL on the DAC. A5 on the black pill to BCLK or bit clock on the DAC. A7 on the black pill to DIN on the DAC. Also connect the three volts and ground pins of both devices to the positive and negative lanes on the breadboard as shown in the video. Now let's build the 5 pin MIDI socket. Get the octocoupler and push it into the breadboard right over the middle notch so the small dot printed onto its surface is facing right. Then connect the lower left pin to the negative and the lower right pin to the positive lane. Now identify the 10k ohm resistor by the rings on its surface. If you have no time for that, I can recommend the cheap electronic components identifier and tester you're seeing right now. Once you identify the correct resistor, push it into the breadboard so it connects the second and the fourth pin on the bottom side of the optocoupler. 
the diode is next. Make sure the black ring is facing right. Then push it into the breadboard so it connects pin 2 to pin 3 on the upper side of the optocoupler. Now get the 220 ohm resistor and connect pin 3 of the upper side of the octocoupler to a pinhole on the right that's not connected to anything else. Then connect pin 2 on the lower side of the optocoupler to A3 on the black pill. Solder two jumper wires to pin 4 and 5 on the back side of the MIDI socket. Make sure the wires are not touching any other pins in doubt. Trim the excess with some pincers. Now connect pin 5 of the MIDI jack to pin 2 on the upper side of the optocoupler and pin 4 on the MIDI jack to the loose end of the 220 ohm resistor. I got this wrong here at first, so my synth stayed silent. But after moving the jumper cable, everything was in working order. Congratulations, you've built yourself a BP synth. Now let's hear what this thing can do. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more DIY projects like the BP synth in the future on this channel, please press the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video or join my Patreon. Thank you very much. Before you start playing, it's a good idea to set up a MIDI controller for all those synth parameters like filter cutter frequency, envelopes, LFOs and more. You'll find a list of all possible controls in the BP Synth zip folder. Right, now that's done, I'll connect the BP Synth to the MIDI out port of my EX5 here and the MIDI controller to its MIDI in port. The BP synth is a monophonic virtual analog synthesizer that can do pulse width modulation among other things. It has a stereo delay and phaser effects on board. Each and every parameter can be mapped to MIDI controllers, as I did in this demonstration, in which I layered four tracks on top of each other, one after another. Consider this a sound demo more than a piece of music. If you want to hear a less improvised piece, please visit my Bandcamp page.
Yeah, and that's it for today. The BP Synth, a very cheap DIY project based on the Black Pill processor. And if you found this interesting and thought this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. Please visit this video sponsor's webpage and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.